pull the door closed. Thank you. Grace and peace, everybody. Welcome to Berean TV. Um, it's been a while since I've done a video. As many of you know, um, the enemy's been busy. Uh, you know, a lot's going on, but we're going to continue with the videos. I think we've been up about 15, 16 months now, and this is the longest that we haven't put out a video. And many of you that are registered or have registered for Sunday Seminary, there's been a delay with the Sunday Seminary. We're gonna resume on January, next semester. We'll resume on January around the week of Martin Luther King's um, anniversary birthday, the 15th, the 19th, somewhere around there. We'll get with y'all with more information. But on Saturdays, maybe starting another two weeks on Saturdays, we're gonna have live classes dealing with certain things as far as the history of the church and esoteric thought within the church. A lot of people don't understand that it's always been two streams coming down from the Garden of Eden, from Genesis all the way down. There's been two streams of knowledge coming down. Ken Johnson have an excellent book, Ancient Paganism, Sorcery, or the Religion of the Fallen Angels, and that speaks of occult tradition, the church fathers, and different things that the church fathers were dealing with. Well, we're dealing with a lot of stuff in the church. Some people totally walk away from the church. Others understand that there's a lot going on. Some people just gave up altogether. But then there's others that look at signs and symbols they want to understand mind control do pastors manipulate is there manipulating in the church through prophecy and attempting to control people and stuff like that and is there an ancient wisdom is there an ancient wisdom that has come down in the church a lot of on other videos that i speak on i've spoken on different um structures different buildings catholic churches that were built by freemasons people that followed an esoteric doctrine and I have a few videos on masonry and the third eye, and we're going to speak a lot more about that because a lot of people don't understand an esoteric tradition that has come down in the church. And did it come from the fallen ones? Is it from the Most High God? When we start dealing with numbers in Scripture, people are confused on the 33rd degree and Jesus and 33 years old and 33 miracles and the pineal gland. There's a lot of stuff that people are confused about. And at the same time, Billinger, I believe it is, had a book back in the days dealing with numbers in the Bible and how important numbers are. What does 40 mean to 12 tribes and the 12 gates and the 12 apostles and so many different things within scripture. Jesus fasting 40 days and 40 nights away into the mountain and Moses being up there. What do we do with mountains? And the Bible speaks of um, being on the mountain. Jesus went away into a mountain and was transfigured. Moses went away into the mountain and spoke with God. The non-canonical book of Enoch speaks about 200 angels falling, being kicked out from heaven and falling down to Mount Hebron. And that was on a mountain. The prophet Muhammad received revelation from whom he believed was the angel Gabriel or Jabril. And that was on a mountain in a cave. And what's the story with mountains and portals in scripture? So we're going to talk a lot about that in um, on some of these classes. We'll speak on different things, more with biblical doctrine and how doctrine came down to us in um, Sunday Seminary. But we'll have Saturday classes dealing with the esoteric thought. And I'm not beating down Freemasons. I have a lot of brothers that's um, Christian brothers in the church that are Freemasons. And a lot of people say, can Freemasonry go hand in hand with the occult tradition? Have Prince Hall Freemasonry done anything for the civil rights movement, the black church? Have they have they have there been leaders that have been Freemasons? Are there pastors that are Freemasons now, popes that have been Freemasons or involved in the um in secret orders? We hear about the Jesuits and the black pope and 
I know I'm touching on a lot of stuff, but these are things that we have to talk about to the mature or to the advanced Christian that wants to learn more. You know, all of us aren't just sitting back speaking in tongues. Some of us, we want to learn and we want to be able to answer people according to our faith, what we believe. According to First Peter and different scriptures in the Bible, it's it's apologia, it's apologetics, it's it's speaking and defending what you believe. I shared in another video that back in the days when O.J. Simpson caught a case, he hired um, a team, a dream team of lawyers, and Johnny Cochran was one. He hired them as his apologia, his apologist, to speak in behalf of him. So we speak in behalf of the Christian faith. We speak in behalf of the Bible. There's a lot of foolishness on the Internet. Um, the white man gave us the Bible. We didn't have the Bible until we we ran into the white man, and that's and that's all that's all foolishness, historically speaking. And a lot of my conscious brothers and sisters claim that they're steeped into history, but they say a lot of things without backing it up. As well as Christians, Christians say some things without backing it up. So we're here to do that. We're here to we're here to explain certain things, and we're going to do that. Um. Some other stuff that's come up, I'm going to attempt to answer. I'm going to start dropping more videos. I'm going to at least try to do one or two videos a week. And thank everybody for their donations, for their prayers, and for everything that's been going on that understand what's happening with the ministry and stuff. And we miss y'all. But we've been getting all the emails. We get all the texts. We get all the, the messages that come our way. And we're going to attempt to answer some things. Some people asked about everything from spirit cooking with this um, election with Hillary Clinton and Pinoza, I believe it is, the guy that's the chair that's running her, that was running her campaign. And, um, and the, the thing of spirit cooking came up and are the elite involved in an esoteric, a secret doctrine or are the elite involved in a spirituality that's different from the average Catholic? the average Protestant, the average person in the street. Well, yes, we have we have evidence and we have a history to show that the elite has always had their religion and then it was always the religion of the other people or the regular or the common people. Was there a plain doctrine? Did Jesus teach an esoteric doctrine? And a lot of people like to quote Matthew and various scriptures. So we're going to deal with the Saturday teaching. We're going to talk about that. But when you start dealing with the subject of um, spirit cooking and stuff like that, there's a lot of artists that are occultists and they do certain things with blood, with milk, with semen. And some people say it's a joke, but it's interesting that the elite get together and go to places like Bohemian Grove and they do certain things with blood and certain rituals and, and we call that magic and there's two different types of magic you have magic with that spelt with the K and magic with the C and magic comes down from, from the ancients as people that was learnt that was studying wisdom but people have used another form of magic to manipulate to manipulate nature to manipulate other people some people would call it hoodoo and voodoo and it's so many different things but i find that my christian brothers and sisters have it all twisted and um we're living in a time where we need to be able to define certain things are we right when we say oh that's just the devil Oh, ultimately speaking, yes, that's, that, that comes down. Even when we start speaking about a Luciferian force, the personality of Lucifer, who was Satan coming down traditionally in the scriptures. And we're going to explain a lot of that stuff. So when we start dealing with spirit cooking, that comes from um, Aleister Crowley. I believe he died in 1947. He was an, he was an occultist and a poet. And he, um, he said he, he personally said that he was involved in various rituals, killing children, drinking blood, all type of crazy stuff. You know, these people are involved in. But it's, it's very interesting that fallen angels and spirits or, or jinns and ghosts, um, they're, they're heavy into blood. Blood ritual is prevalent coming out of the Middle East and various religions back in the days. And, and, um, and we're going to talk about that stuff. So that's really an occult practice. Is Hillary Clinton and everybody involved in it? WikiLeaks, there was something with the email that came out. But the elite have been doing things like this, 
have they been involved in speaking to the spirits they've they've been involved in that we have evidence of that when my mind go to Mitch Horowitz's book Occult America that's an excellent book dealing with the history of occult here in America with voodoo blacks in America Europeans in America and the occult spiritualism the Fox sisters upstate New York on Mitch Horowitz's book Occult America that's very good and the cult tradition has been in the White House. When we look at the secret of the books like The Secret Architecture of Washington, D.C., Benjamin Franklin, George Washington, they were occultists. They studied a secret, separate tradition. And, and a lot of people, a lot of the elite, believed in speaking to their spirit guides. That's how come they were heavy into the pineal gland and opening up the 33rd they're there on um, the 33rd degree they were taught in that in the large in Freemasonry and Helen Blavatsky she said that's the only reason I speak on Freemasonry a lot is because Helen Blavatsky said the occult teachings that has always been in the lodge that has always been the schools of the ancient mysteries they say that that is in modern day Freemasonry and that has come down and now it's spilling out to the populace now it's spilling out to the people so we're hearing a lot of this stuff some of it leaked out with Elijah Muhammad, some of it leaked out with Noble Drew Ali, and some of it leaked out with Joseph Smith in the Mormon church, who were all occultists, who all studied the ancient esoteric doctrine. And now it's out and there's some people that are confused. Do the Pope know something? Is there something involved in the Catholic church? Are they the keepers of the ancient secrets? that has come down, ancient Luciferianism, that has come down with the teaching of Jesus at the same time. That's how can we see so many occult symbols on Catholic churches. And somebody recently said to me, "Is it, are the Catholics, you're, you know, you're involved in apologetics and you speak about the Mormons and you speak about the Moors and you t um, share different things with the occults and cults, simple cults. A Christian cult would be the Mormon church. Jehovah Witnesses are the Catholics a cult is the Pope or do they have the largest pagan cult on the planet they share a, a cult tradition that has come down but for the most part they're one branch of 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 Christendom the Protestant Church which I follow comes from the Catholic Church when Martin Luther um in fifteen seventeen, I believe it was October thirty first, um, nailed up the um fifteen the um the ninety five um thesis ninety five things that he felt the Catholic Church was doing that was actually against Scripture. And we're going to talk about stuff like that. So we're going to drop different videos, and I'm going to have classes on Saturday. Y'all just y'all just hit me up at Berean Teach um, at gmail.com, or the, those of y'all that have the number, y'all can just call me and, and just, just say, you know, I want to be down with the class. We'll connect y'all. We're going to go through Zoom, and we're going to talk about the occult thing. We're going to talk about... Um, like I said, the numbers in scripture and that 33rd degree and Jesus being 33 and 33 miracles and historically how we have been dealing with interpretation in the scriptures. We're going to talk about that. I just want to drop this video, let y'all know Berean, we're back and and we're going to talk. We're going to talk. We're, you know, and, and the classes are good because we're open to questions and answers. I'm not the sharpest knife in the drawer. Sunday seminary has been good. Shout out to everybody in the class. We have some heavy students of the Bible, students of history and theology in there. And, and, and we discuss a lot of things and, and we're open to, um, it's not a one man show. You know, I do the teaching and this and that, but, but you know, it's open for input because a lot of people read a lot of things. Once again, a lot of us not just jumping up and down in church, speaking in tongues and confused about, um, about the history of scripture, esoteric thought and stuff like that. And we're here to give an answer. So we want to equip some other people. We're going to deal with a lot of stuff that maybe you, the average pastor is not dealing with because he don't have time spending so much of his time shepherding people and just teaching people, showing them how to live holy and, and walk before the Lord and working out their own things in their personal lives. But those of us that's been in believers for a while, that we want to grow in, and God has put certain things on our heart as far as defending the faith and understanding.